dress cannot conceal a selfish soul. And a powerful weapon huh? cannot turn huh? you into a warrior. Huh? <laughs> Everyone huh? must nurture and train themselves. The story of Celestia is no different. Be careful, Celestia! <laughs> Celestia's father was a close servant to the king in the magic castle. Sir Anthony often brought her to the castle to play. Your Majesty, I apologize. Mm. <laughs> to make amends, huh? press the subscribe button for Woe Fairy Tale right now. Mm. The king was also delighted mm. to have Celestia as a friend to his daughter, <laughs> Princess Celine. Celine knew Celestia <laughs> was her age, so she was even friendlier and more open. She led Celestia to where everyone was practicing magic. <laughs> I wish I had one like that too. However, the closer they became, the more self-conscious Celestia felt. Huh? <laughs> Whenever the servants served Celestia, as per the princess's orders, they often showed disdain. <gasps> I'm so sorry! Huh? <laughs> 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 On the 18th birthday of Celestia and Celine, the king specially organized for both of them. Happy birthday, princess! Woohoo! <laughs> huh? Mm. Come on, make a wish! <laughs> <sighs> and here is a gift for both of you! Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> there were three magic wands. The first one was the Wand of Light, simple in appearance not flashy at all. The second one was the Wand of Fire, quite beautiful, and the last one was the Unicorn Wand, intricately engraved and very eye-catching. <laughs> Choose the wand you like, my children. <laughs> Princess, huh? choose the Unicorn Wand. <laughs> But Celine chose the Wand of Light, the least outstanding of them all. <laughs> I feel I'm not capable enough to possess the other wands. Hmm. Huh? Then I'll take the Unicorn Wand. <laughs> Celestia had longed for a wand, and now it had become a reality, <laughs> even better than expected. Mm. Mm. Celestia <laughs> excitedly waved the wand, causing it to cast a spell <gasps> that knocked down a section of the wall. If you're not skilled, don't use that wand recklessly. Make the wand suitable for you. <laughs> Don't chase its power, or it will control you. Every day, Celestia went to the magic <laughs> castle to study and train with Princess Celine. <laughs> Seeing the princess using her wand way quite skilled, everyone praised her. Celestia only knew how to tightly hold her wand like a piece of wood. During Celestia and the princess's picnic, they inadvertently disturbed a forest demon. <laughs> it rushed towards them as if to devour them all. 
Celestia quickly tried to control her unicorn wand, but it wouldn't listen to her. Huh? Celine swung her wand of light directly into the demon's eyes. Celine quickly leapt up and used her wand to defeat the demon, making it disappear instantly. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief, and they all praised Celine's great skill. She understood and mastered the power of the wand, making it obey her. Meanwhile, Celestia could only look at her unicorn wand in frustration. Celestia took her wand home and threw it into a corner. I shouldn't have accepted this gift. <laughs> you deserve to be the owner of this wand. Huh? She was the spirit of the unicorn wand. <laughs> Celestia's eyes sparkled as if some invisible power had entered her mind. <laughs> no one will ever be able to mock me again. <laughs> First, Celestia decided to transform her poor appearance. Hmm? She swapped Princess Celine's new dress with her old ugly one. <laughs> when Celine received the dress, she saw that the old dress was ugly and completely different from the sketch that she had drawn. What is this? It suits me perfectly. <laughs> You look beautiful, my mistress. <laughs> the next day, Celestia went to the castle wearing Celine's clothes, looking lovely with makeup. My dress! How dare you steal it! Don't accuse me! Do you have any evidence that I stole it? Celine, frustrated, couldn't speak and walked away. <laughs> I can't believe Celestia would say such hurtful things! <laughs> The power of the unicorn wand <laughs> turned Celestia into a different person. Father, take the precious pearl in the king's room to make us richer, and no one will look down on us. I can't do that. The king has been kind to us. I would rather be poor than betray him. <clears throat> that night, Celestia broke into the king's room on her own. <clears throat> she tiptoed towards the precious gem. But the gem was too powerful, and Celestia couldn't touch it. In her confusion, Celestia considered taking a daring action. But then she heard footsteps and quickly ran away. Catch the intruder! <laughs> No need, I'm fine. Huh? Celine felt puzzled, but still had the intention of finding the intruder. I almost harmed the king. You did well. You don't need to blame yourself. The next day, Celestia went to the castle as if nothing had happened. After the training, I have seen your efforts. Celine, you make me proud as the wielder of the Wand of Light. As for Celestia, you're all so diligent. However, this wand is not easy to absorb energy from, so you still need more training. Show him your ability, Celestia. <laughs> Celestia suddenly aimed her wand and cast a spell at Celine. You had your chance, but you didn't learn. When you stole the gem from my room, huh? I thought you were momentarily overwhelmed, so I huh? let it slide. I can't believe you're the one who did it! Exposed, <laughs> Celestia huh? had to take a risky move. <laughs> Both ones faced off against each other. Her growing hatred made Celestia succumb yeah. to darkness. Celestia pushed her unicorn wand to the limit, causing Celine's wand to break in half. Huh? <laughs> Celestia lost control of herself. She could no longer distinguish right from wrong. Huh? Snap out of it, Celestia! Huh? 
Don't lose yourself, my child. Poverty is not a sin. It's only the lack of determination that deserves condemnation. <laughs> she struggled to break free from the unicorn's influence. The spirit had possessed <laughs> Celestia's body. <laughs> Celestia! <laughs> Celestia, you were originally a kind-hearted person. Don't let evil tarnish your soul. Celestia recalled the moments of poverty, but happiness. <laughs> Get out of my body! <laughs> the Unicorn Queen was expelled from Celestia's body. Without me, the wand is useless. <laughs> <laughs> I will create power for this wand on my own. Celestia rushed forward to use her wand to defeat the Unicorn Queen. She had discovered the true power of the wand. Strength, integrity, kindness. Celestia restored Celine's wand of light. <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. I was wrong. Mm. Mm. Now I understand that what truly matters is what suits us and brings real value. Mm. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I was too selfish and shallow. <laughs> That's a lesson for you. Not everything beautiful on the outside is good, and not everything ugly is useless. It all depends on how we use it. <laughs> With all misunderstandings resolved, they all lived happily ever after in the Magic Castle. <laughs> What would happen if one day you discovered you huh? possess the power of tarot cards? Subscribe to Woe Fairy Tales to follow the story. Vivian was a rebellious princess, always arguing with her parents and ignoring her family to chase exciting adventures outside. Her younger sister Cassie was the complete opposite. Cassie cared and reminded Vivian about everything, from family matters to their adventurous journeys. Vivian always felt that her sister was too worried, so she often ignored Cassie's advice. Trouble started when Vivian and Cassie frequently heard a mysterious voice whispering in their ears, urging them to a certain cave on the mountain. I have a terrible headache. I'm going crazy. Do you hear those sounds too? Yes, we need to find out what that cave is hiding. Come on, let's go. But Vivian, don't you have a bad feeling about this? Ignoring her sister's concerns, Vivian stubbornly wanted to explore. When they entered the cave, they discovered two mystical cards. Vivian touched the sun card, and Cassie touched the moon card. Hello, Vivian and Cassie. You are huh? the chosen ones to become the huh? rightful owners of the sun huh? and the moon. Your souls will be connected to these mm. cards forever. The cards will find their owners through specific personalities. Vivian was chosen as the owner of the Sun card because of her enthusiasm and confidence. Cassie was chosen for the Moon card because of her rich imagination and concern for the future. The chosen individuals can only control their own cards. To acquire other cards, they must defeat the owners of those cards. Anyone who completes the full tarot deck will receive any wish they desire. Keep trying, Vivian and Cassie. Huh? Oh, that's wonderful. Let's collect all 78 cards, Cassie. But what will happen to the defeated owners? Is it just a simple defeat, or... Who knows? Don't worry, we won't lose! No! I refuse to participate in this crazy game! Why were we chosen? What is the purpose? 
Come on, Cassie, don't be so cowardly. The two sisters started arguing, completely unaware of their surroundings. Uh, huh? Be careful, Vivian! No, Cassie! <laughs> I'm sorry for being so useless. No, Cassie! Don't leave me! <laughs> Cassie gradually weakened and was about to wipe Vivian's tears with her hand, but she couldn't make it in time as her soul was sucked into the moon card. Vivian, filled with anger, turned back and looked at the one who harmed her sister. The person had been watching the two sisters since they entered the cave and wanted to possess the two cards. Hand over the cards or you will be next. Shut your mouth! Huh? The sun card is powerful? Well, let's see. The warrior revealed the chariot card. Huh? So defeated owners are trapped inside their own cards? Now the real game begins. Cassie, I swear I will collect all 78 cards and use a wish to save you. Vivian bid farewell to her family, wrote a letter and embarked on her journey to collect the cards. She hid in the forest and diligently trained her skills with the sun card. The sun card had the advantage of being able to locate the remaining tarot cards. Vivian simply followed its guidance to reach her first opponent. Here we go, another opponent. You will be defeated by me. I am the owner of the Six of Wands card. Don't be so sure. Give up. My card represents victory, and I have already acquired 20 cards. Even more! <laughs> Bring it on! Uh -huh. ah! <laughs> the paladin was defeated and sucked into the Six of Wands card. Vivian successfully acquired all of his cards and continued her journey. Time passed quickly, and Vivian embarked on an arduous adventure to collect the tarot cards in various lands. She faced fierce attacks and suffered countless injuries. Others were frightened by the tarot cards and, like Cassie, did not want to participate in the battle. This made it easy for Vivian to defeat them and claim their cards. The burden of trapping innocent souls within the tarot cards weighed heavily on Vivian's conscience. But she believed it was the only way to save her sister. <laughs> the final card was located in a secluded cabin deep in the woods. No! Don't hurt my mother and me! Don't be afraid. Everything will be fine. The mother knew what would happen. Despite her attempts to hide her child in the forest, she couldn't defy fate. I surrender. Please take my child to safety. I'm sorry. Truly sorry. The mother was drawn into the High Priestess card, while the child cried in despair. Vivian fulfilled her promise to the mother and brought the child to an orphanage. After a challenging journey, Vivian rested on a lush green meadow. As she fell asleep, the High Priestess card created a surreal dream for her. The High Priestess was the intermediary between the outer world and the inner consciousness of each individual. Thus, the mother's soul allowed Vivian to reunite with her sister Cassie. <laughs> Oh, Cassie, I finally found you. I'm sorry. Huh? I've been so terrible, I... Huh? Vivian looked huh? at the spirits that haunted her all this time, huh? representing the defeated owners. 
They could criticize Vivian harshly. I understand, sister. You made such efforts to save me, but sacrificing countless lives just to save one life? Is it worth it? Spirits projected a future vision, depicting a world engulfed in flames and Vivian's unfavorable fate. <gasps> because you're my sister, everything I've done is worth it. I can't turn back now, Cassie. I just need you by my side. The full tarot deck was finally obtained. Vivian followed the instructions of the cards to reach her final destination and make her wish. <gasps> well done, young lady. You have completed my challenge. I am Denzel, and I will grant your wish. Vividly recalling her dream from the previous night and her sister's advice, Vivian hesitated. Was it all worth it? I... I just want my sister to be resurrected! <laughs> so be it. Mm. Huh? Oh, Cassie! I missed you so much! As long as you're here, I don't need anything else! Unbeknownst to them, they had fallen into Denzel's <laughs> trap. <laughs> I have granted your wish. Now it's time for you to fulfill mine. <laughs> Vivian instantly turned dark as she absorbed all of Denzel's memories. Denzel was once a malvolent and powerful <laughs> dark sorcerer with prophetic abilities. He used his powers to create the tarot deck, representing the different aspects of human nature. He pretended to spread the benefits of tarot to help people understand themselves and glimpse into the past and future. However, his intention was to manipulate and control everyone. The entire world of sorcerers became furious. They united to defeat Denzel. His soul was torn into 78 pieces and absorbed into the tarot deck. Just you wait. I will have my revenge. The fragments of its soul scattered across the cards, creating a malvolent game. He wanted humans to destroy each other and become trapped in those cards, nourishing his soul. His soul would be restored once someone acquired all 78 tarot cards, and he would take over the body of the victor after granting their wish. Please wake up! Huh? Look, it's me, Vivian! I'm here! Huh? Hearing her sister's cries, <laughs> Vivian struggled to regain control of herself and approached the tarot deck. You fool! If you destroy the deck, both of us will be annihilated! But Vivian truly realized her mistake. However, the sisters were unaware that they had fallen into Denzel's trap. Denzel was defeated, and he took Vivian's body with him as he vanished. Finally, the innocent souls were freed and would be resurrected immediately. Sister! Huh? Huh? I'm here, Cassie. I finally huh? protected you. Promise me you will live a good life from now on? I promise! And please, don't forget about me, Cassie. Everything that belongs to you <laughs> and the memories we share. <laughs> Even though we must part ways now, I will cherish them forever. <laughs> Cassie never forgot her sister. She recreated the entire tarot deck and wrote a book about Vivian's sacrifice. <laughs> Decades later, through Cassie's book, tarot became popularized. It was used for self-reflection, divination, and rediscovering one's self-worth. Once upon a time, in a magnificent and luxurious fairy tale kingdom, where gods, <laughs> demons, and humans coexisted, there was a beautiful and strong 18-year-old princess named Deja. Daisha possessed a magical sword that was passed down to her by her mentor, 
worshipped the Sun God, which had the power to expel the souls of demons from possessed individuals. Furthermore, she also had a magical eye since birth that could be used as a gateway to trap evil spirits inside, which made everyone admire her. In particular, her third eye had the power to see the imminent death of any living thing she touched. Despite her abilities, Daisha was absolutely forbidden from interfering with the cycle of life and death. If she disobeyed, she would be punished by the gods. Although Daisha was strong, she had a weakness. She often became tired and could not use her third eye when exposed to bright light like the sun. In fact, she could even see a dark soul inside her at times, which made her very worried. Hmm. She asked her mother about this, but the queen only became sad and evaded the question. I cannot explain everything to you right now, my child, but if you want to use your magic eye during the day, remember to wear your cloak. I have also locked all the rooms containing treasures, so if you need anything, just tell me. Hmm. Daisha didn't want to make things more difficult for the queen, hmm. so she kept these questions to herself. Hmm. One day, the magic from Daisha's eye was completely reversed. Instead of being able to use it to control demons, it unleashed many evil spirits. Daisha didn't understand what was happening, so after she managed to deal with the demons with her magical sword, she hurried to find the queen to talk about it. Upon arrival, Daisha was horrified to see the Sun God angry, capturing the Queen. Excuse me, Sun God, why did you take my mother's soul away? Hmm. That's because yesterday, you violated the prohibition when you used your third eye to save your mother. Therefore, I am here to punish your family. The Sun God recounted that yesterday, when Daisha bid farewell to the Queen to visit the Sun God Temple once a year, just like every year, her third eye suddenly lit up. It revealed to her that the Queen would pass away today due to old age and weakness. However, Daisha did not want to lose her only loved one, so she decided to change her mother's fate. Daisha quickly made an excuse to help her mother visit the Sun God Temple today, and then set out on her journey. After completing all the tasks at the temple, she happily returned home, but suddenly noticed a dark orb heading towards her. She quickly dodged and tried to catch the culprit, but he escaped. Nevertheless, Daisha was still happy that she had protected her mother from the wicked person today. However, the sun god witnessed Daisha's wrongful act, so we came here in person to punish both mother and daughter. But all of this is my fault! My mother is completely innocent! Therefore, please forgive my mother and punish me in any way you want! Uh, since we are teacher and student, I will spare your mother's life if you promise never to repeat this mistake and agree to give me the Divine Sword. Because your impulsive and immature actions have disappointed me and I cannot easily forgive you. Therefore, I want to give the Divine Sword to someone who is more responsible than you in the future. For me, my mother's life is more important than anything else in the world, so I will give the Divine Sword to you! However, mm. when Daisha handed over the sword to the Sun God, he suddenly smirked mischievously and swung the sword mm. towards Daisha's third eye. Daisha froze and saw a three-eyed soul like herself escape from her body and collapse. The soul flew towards the mm. Sun God and was captured by him as his third eye in the surprise of Daisha. <laughs> Finally! The day of revenge has come. Then, he broke his sword and transformed into a cruel demon king. It turned out that years ago, the younger brother of the demon king loved the queen so much that he agreed not to do anything wrong. Therefore, the demon king was very angry and wanted to destroy the couple, but his younger brother tried to use magic to seal him and passed away. Eighteen years later, the Demon King finally had enough power to escape the seal. But when he went to take revenge on the Queen, he found Daisha in the temple. The Demon Queen quickly recognized that Daisha's third eye was similar to that of his younger brother, and it was surely the daughter of that couple. Hmm. Hmm. 
If that kid is the hybrid child of the queen and my younger brother, then that magical eye will represent the soul of the demon existing inside its body. Then, if I can release the power and dark soul of that kid, my magic will increase exponentially. <laughs> However, despite using every method to obtain the eye, the Demon King still could not easily achieve this ambition. He needed something that could separate Daisha's dark soul from her body, and that was the Divine Sword. <laughs> Therefore, the Demon King had to apply a part of his black magic to the third eye and silently harm the Queen to force Daisha to hand over the sword. As soon as he obtained the treasure, the Demon King finally gained the magical eye. It turns out that because I have half of my soul as a demon, that's why I feel tired and see my dark soul every time I come into contact with the light? That's right. Your mother probably didn't want you to feel ashamed of your identity and wanted you to focus on defeating the demons, so she kept this a secret. However, I will let your mother and you witness how the kingdom, which you have protected for so long, will be destroyed under my hand. <laughs> He then released many demons from the Third Eye to destroy and dominate the land. <laughs> Although Daisha was very shocked about her identity, she looked at her mother and people being attacked by the Demon King and his demons and knew that she had to fight to protect them. However, at this moment, Daisha didn't have her magic sword or her Third Eye, so the Demon King was able to defeat her easily. I can't give up like this! But I need a new plan to defeat him! She looked around and saw a crystal lamp swinging back and forth. Suddenly, <laughs> she came up with an idea. Hmm. Uh. Quickly, she picked up a broken piece of her sword and threw it towards uh. the lamp. Yeah. Although the Demon King was yes. able to dodge it, Daisha was able to steal the orb that held the Queen captive from his hand. Yeah. Mother, wake up! It's me, Daisha! Daisha... It seems like the Demon King has returned and attacked me again. I know everything, and now we need to find a way to defeat him. She ran to a locked room at the end of the hallway, but the Demon King caught up with her. <laughs> ha! You foolish child. Why would you willingly trap yourself here, making it easy for me to defeat you? If you're so good, then fight me! The Demon King attempted to cast a spell at Daisha, but he couldn't help but notice her confident expression. <laughs> ah, it seems like you want me to destroy the gate behind you. Is there something in there that scares me? Don't try to fool me. Suddenly, the orb containing the queen's soul flew out of Daisha's hand and taunted the Demon King. Mother! No! I won't spare you! Enraged, the Demon King fired a spell at the orb, but Daisha quickly shielded it with her body. Daisha, let it go! No, I won't! Mom, you have always been the one who worries and takes care of me for so long, so I cannot abandon the duty of being your child for these matters. Moreover, this is my fault for changing my mother's faith without permission. Therefore, I am willing to sacrifice myself for my mother. The Demon King was furious and used his last spell to create a huge explosion to destroy the mother and daughter. However, the door of the room was heavily impacted and collapsed revealing many shining treasures illuminating towards the third eye of Daisha, making the Demon King gradually fall due to fear of the bright light. Seizing that opportunity, Daisha quickly stood up and used the remaining power of the sword to defeat the Demon King. When Daisha regained her third eye, she quickly ran to the Queen to inquire about her mother's health. Daisha, I am too tired. Perhaps I cannot pass through this life of door and death anymore. Therefore, my child, please take good care of yourself later. It can't be! I can't let my mother leave me! Please, heavenly beings, save my mother's life! I will exchange it for any price! As soon as Daisha finished speaking, the sun god truly appeared in the hmm. dazzling light. Daisha, through the recent battle, I understand your filial pity for the queen, as well as the motherly <laughs> love of both of you who can live and die for each other. In addition, you have contributed a lot to this kingdom in the past time. Therefore, I agree to extend the Queen's lifespan with the condition that Daisha, you will deduct a part of your own lifespan to replace it. In addition, you must strive and continue the journey of demon slaying to protect everyone. I agree! After the Sun God fulfilled his <laughs> promise, the Queen and Daisha were finally able to be together and live happily ever after. <laughs> One 
Once upon a time, in the early days, there appeared planets of sweetness in the galaxy. The planet ice cream was covered in a pure, cool and refreshing white colour. Houses and trees were formed from gigantic ice cream cones. Every princess of the ice cream planet had the magical power to shoot ice, freezing everything around. Among them, Beva had superior powers. She could create thick layers of ice, ward off the heat of the sun and protect the planet. Next to the planet ice cream stood the planet candy. The planet candy dazzled people with its vibrant and colourful candies. A gentle river of chocolate flowed around everything. And the houses and landscapes were made of various sweet treats. As you passed through, you could hear the joyful sound of popping candies. Shadi, the leader of the planet, had the ability yeah. to transform everything into delightful sweet treats. The neighbour of the candy planet was the planet Cake. The planet Cake exuded a simple and pure beauty, where the houses were made of cookies, biscuits and sponge cakes. The air carried a sweet aroma of freshly baked cakes, and in the distance you could hear the delightful sound of cake bells. Princess Yana possessed the magic to seal everything within an invisible thread. Lastly, there was the planet Pudding, radiating smoothness and gentleness. From the sky to the ground, everything was soft and tender. Ari, the Pudding Princess, had the ability to soften even the hardest things, making them tender and delicate. However, these planets did not get along well with each other, which made it easier for evil forces to invade. The planet Candy was the first target of the ant tribe, who had poisonous legs that caused damage to all the sweets. Princess Shardy tried to use her powers to protect the planet, but failed to defeat them. Shardy decided to seek help from the other planets, but received cold rejections. Upon returning to her planet and seeing the devastation, Shadi burst into tears. It's all because of me. I'm utterly useless for not being able to protect my own planet. Princess, don't blame yourself. We'll always be by your side. In the past, my older sister Kari was the most powerful. But since she became the queen, she only sent letters saying she wouldn't fulfill her mission in another land. I've tried every means to contact her, but I couldn't find her. Just then, the news of the intergalactic beauty pageant spread. Huh? Another beauty pageant? Isn't my sister the reigning queen? That's strange. I must participate to meet the queen and find answers about my sister. The day of the beauty pageant arrived, and all the princesses gathered in the hall of the Galaxy Kingdom. Everyone was dressed splendidly, while Shadi wore an old dress. People mocked and jeered at her. The official competition began, and the host introduced the various rounds. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Galaxy Peace Queen pageant. The competition consists of three rounds, evening gown showcase, talent round, and question and answer round. Those who advance to the third round will have a direct audience with the Queen of the Galaxy, Apora. That's right. I have to meet the Queen to inquire about my sister's whereabouts. I must make it to the third round. Shadi quietly observed while waiting for the contestants to get ready for the first round. How can I win this round? They are all so beautiful. Give up! No matter how hard you try, it's useless. <laughs> the host started calling the names of each contestant. Huh? The evening gown showcase round is about to begin. 
<laughs> the first contestant is from the ice cream planet, Beva. <laughs> the second contestant is from the cake planet. The third contestant is from the pudding planet. And Shadi is the final catwalk contestant. Finally, the princess from the candy planet has arrived. Huh? Shardy! Huh? Her dress is so ugly. Does she have any other dress? Hers is older than mine. At the same time, the other contestants were returning to their positions. <sighs> Sorry, I must make it to the next round. She quietly transformed candies to disrupt the performances of the other contestants without anyone noticing. The princesses sitting on the stage were shocked and cried out in pain. And of course, Shadi received the highest score in the first round. The second round is the talent round. Contestants, please prepare your most outstanding performances. First up, let's welcome contestant Beva. Beva stepped forward. Suddenly, the lights went out. On the stage, there was only one spotlight shining on Beva, making her stand out. Her feet glided gracefully, as if she were wearing ice skates. Beva could even create ice from her hands. I'm sorry, Beva. As Beva approached the wings, unexpectedly, a candy stick pricked her foot. Feeling embarrassed, Beva gave up on her performance. And the next contestant, Yana! Yana began her performance. Strands of pasta gracefully flew through the air from her sleeves and twirled around Yana like a whirlwind. Jana, forgive me. Suddenly, a long candy bar flew towards Yana. Yana got confused, and the strands of pasta entangled her like a mummy. Huh? Yana decided to give up on her performance. <sighs> Next up, contestant Ari! Ari performed a dance routine on giant puddings. The soft puddings acted as springboards, propelling Ari from one side to the other. Uh, Ari, I have no other choice. Ari stumbled, and small pudding cubes fell on her head. Ari quickly gave up as well. There's no need to argue. At the end of the round, once again, Shardy secured the highest score. The winner of the second round is Shardy! <laughs> the final round, the question and answer session came, and Shardy was taken to meet Queen Epora. It was a special room where Shardy couldn't see the Queen's appearance. Hello, Queen Epora. I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Run away! It's the Queen's <gasps> trap! Startled, Shadi rushed to pull the curtain forcefully. Sister! Run! She's coming! The Queen has been kidnapping the most beautiful huh? and talented girls to absorb their life force and remain forever young! Huh? <laughs> huh? It's too late now! <laughs> Epora rushed forwards and cast a spell on Shadi, rendering her unable to move, her whole body frozen. Ah! You monster! You'll never be beautiful by carrying an evil heart! I will defeat you! Ha 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 ha! How will you do that? Like, like this? After their failed performances, the princesses began to suspect something was wrong. They secretly followed Shadi to the Queen's room to find the truth. They listened to Shadi's story and Kari's revelation about the evil Queen Epora. Shadi, you played dirty because you realized the contest had issues, just like the mysterious disappearance of our sister. 
We will help you protect Carrie and fight against her. <laughs> Your imitations don't talk too much! Yana shot out strands of pasta that tightly wrapped around Apora, immobilizing her. Immediately, Beaver quickly shot ice blocks to encase Apora. Without hesitation, Shadi transformed into a candy rocket and forced herself inside. Finally, Ari turned into a pudding launch pad, ending the battle. Shadi and the princesses brought Kari back to the candy planet. Together, they helped Kari regain her original appearance. People from different planets came to celebrate with the Candy Planet. They all joined forces to repair and restore the Sweet Planet after the attack of the Ant Tribe. Thus, the Candy Planet was revived and adorned itself with a sweet and enchanting beauty once again. From then on, the four planets, Ice Cream, Candy, Cake and Pudding, lived peacefully, creating a sparkling and beautiful galaxy. And so, our story ends here. Please click the subscribe button for more wonderful and heartwarming stories on Woe Fairy Tale.